Finally, after many battles, you've won. You defeated the game within a game within a game. Your reward? A mysterious file called Old Data, but something doesn't feel right. Opening it unleashes a flood of top secret files and redacted documents, but what does it mean? Clearly, whatever was hidden here was not meant to be seen. In the brief flashes we get, we see that it's led to war, espionage. It's tied to massive government conspiracies. What began as just a game suddenly transcends beyond. Suddenly, the game becomes real. Should we accept this challenge? Challenge? Should we try to solve the mystery? Probably not, but curiosity gets the better of us. And the clues are there. Inscription, this game within a game, has one more challenge in store for us. So let me explain to you all the game that you didn't know was there. The game that goes beyond mere digital cards and cabins. Today we reveal the deepest secret hidden in inscription. That way if, when, they come for me, others will know the truth. internet, welcome to Game Theory, the show that feels like a Yu-Gi-Oh fan stuck inside of a creepypasta, cause today we're continuing down the rabbit hole that is Inscription, the roguelike card game that begins as funny animal goes brrrr and ends with homicidal game devs on your doorstep. I suppose you could say that this game is more than meets the eye, <laughs> get it? Cause you have to shove a knife into your own eye in order to win. If you don't get that, well chances are you haven't watched our previous theory, so to kick things off today, you should probably make a blood sacrifice over on the subscribe button button so you don't miss anything in the future, and then go and watch our previous video recapping the main story of the game that is linked right yeah. To briefly summarize what you need to know, Inscription begins like a typical card game but slowly reveals itself to be a video captured by aspiring YouTuber Luke Carter. While opening a pack of retro cards, he discovers coordinates that lead him to a game disc buried out in the woods, Inscription, left there by one of the game's creators, Casey Hobbs, a woman who is now dead from a tragic fire. Luke's videos start to uncover conspiracy around some Something hidden on the disc, a mysterious file titled Old Data. By looking closely at details from the game, we learn that Inscription was made to seal away the old data because unleashing it would be too dangerous for the world. And it does appear to have powerful abilities. One piece of the old data, something called the Carnoffle Code, is able to grant sentience to the game's main characters, the scribes. But how? What exactly is this ancient power and where does it come from? Luke starts to get close to the answers, but his ARG is unfortunately cut short by the game's developer, Gamefuna who neither liked nor commented, but instead subscribed Luke to a date with the business end of a gun. And that's it. That's the game in a nutshell. Every story beat followed and deciphered, with more cliffhanger questions left for Daniel Mullins' next game to explore, I suppose. But what if I told you that wasn't the end of the game? That in this three-act game, there's actually an act four? What if I told you that his next game was right in front of us all along? That's right. The entire game of Inscription is itself a cover for a much bigger game that Daniel Mullins has created crafted for us. One that leads, no joke, to a real disc hidden out in the woods for us gamers to dig up. So grab your shovels, friends, it's time to dig, both literally and figuratively, into the real game that's hidden inside of Inscription. The first major act of Inscription ends with you finding a new game icon, which allows you to, go figure, begin a new game. Only this time it's in a completely different art style from everything up to that point. When you start this new game though, the keen-eyed among you may have noticed that what we get looks like an old Windows command line. And this prompt can actually become responsive if you hit Control c while it's on screen. By using some basic coding language, which you can figure out by using the help tool, or you just know because you're a pre-internet boomer, you can navigate into a new file directory, specifically the one at the heart of the mystery, old data. There, we find a log.txt file, but when attempting to decode it, the command line prompts us for a cipher. After throwing Valorant characters, that guy from the Matrix and famous Twitch streamers at it, it got nowhere, so it's back to the game for some clues, specifically back to the guy who's been doing a lot of the legwork for us, Luke Carter. Last time when we talked about Luke's story, we were mainly focused on the videos that moved the plot forward, but there are a few others that have been broken or corrupted. These error videos are a bit of a mess, but you know that they have to be here for some reason, right? And indeed they are. If you freeze frame that, zoom in and enhance, it looks like Luke was onto something by covering everything with post-it notes. Kinda reminds me of my office every time a new FNAF game comes out. But here we see a close-up of one of the post-it notes, which says, my college is 12, perhaps, blood letter box. Could this possibly be the cipher that we need? Going back to the command prompt, we try it and uh...
That is a big old nope. However, it is a clue that'll help us find the ciphers that we need. So we start with the first section, Mycologist 12. The Mycologist is actually one of the bosses from the main game. During that fight, we encounter a card that has this really odd name, just a random assortment of numbers, but loyal theorists will know that nothing in an ARG is ever truly random. These numbers are the first part of our cipher, but how many of them do we use? Well, it's right there in the clue, 12. The second clue, perhaps, is a lot trickier to find. In fact, it's such a generic word that you could probably link it to anything within the game itself, but that's where it gets you, because it's not actually in this game. It's really a reference to Pony Island, a previous Daniel Mullins game. In it, there was a mysterious sound bite that, when reversed, sounded like the words a beeper, perhaps. The beeper, Can that one word really be the thing that's connecting these two games? Yep, it is. If you watch the credits of Inscription closely, already a monumental task, the game credits someone for the design of beeper. Now, to be fair, I don't know much about game development, but, uh, I don't think beeper is a real job there. That someone is named Louis Nathus, which is weirdly similar to the name of a character from another Daniel Mullins title, Hex, Lou Nattis, a man who, if you play that game, is revealed to be the CEO of Game Funa, the same company that killed off Luke in Inscription. Yep, it appears that we are fully immersed in the Daniel Mullins connected universe. If we look at the credit for Louis Nathus, we see what appears to be an asset link, but that URL doesn't lead to anywhere. It does, however, provide us with the next part of our cipher. After the word beeper, where perhaps would be in the phrase, we find 8339344 question mark question mark. That's solution number two. Now for the third and final clue, blood letterbox. And here, things hit a bit of a roadblock. You see, in the weeks after the game's release, the Daniel Mullins Games Discord was leading the charge and ripping through all these secrets, with Jack 0 underscore 07272 consolidating it all down into a single running document. But at this point, even Dead dedicated members of the community weren't really able to follow the clue. Instead, they had to brute force their way to find a solution. The best train of thought that I could muster up for this one is that in Act 1, there's the Bone Lord pedestal, and it requires a blood sacrifice. So we then have to interact with the Bone Lord in Act 2 and Act 3 as well. Anyway, during that Act 3 encounter, a hint becomes visible if and only if you set your screen to a letterbox format. Bone Lord 666, or at least I think that's what it's supposed to say in lead speak. I'm not the most proficient hacksaw. Anyway, that provides provides us our third and final code for the cipher. So, going back to the command prompt, we tried to decode old data. We're asked for a cipher, we put in our three pieces of code, and... Nothing. Well, almost nothing. We get part of a chat log from a person, C, who appears to be talking about a smuggled disk, but... that's about it. Clearly, there are parts of this conversation missing, and, as we can plainly see, there are parts of the chat that are glitched or encoded in some way. So, it looks like we're back to the solving board, friends. The first, SC 167 BP True requires us to know some basic game design principles, so a huge shout out to the Daniel Mullen subreddit for this one. Basically, SE in gaming code typically stands for story events. It's how the game keeps track of progress within the save file. And, fun fact, save files can be manipulated without playing, so by opening that file up in a text editor like Notepad, we can add 167 to our story events chain. The BP is definitely the more obscure one here. This one is shorthand for another variable within the save file, both Lord Puzzle active. Basically a variable that keeps track of whether this skull's eyes in the cabin are glowing or not. Our hint ends with BP true, so let's set Bone Lord Puzzle active to true. Now we load the game and immediately get a glitchy screen where the Bone Lord skull pops up, and for a brief second we see the on-screen text, I am learned too much before the game crashes. 23k2 floor is simultaneously really easy and also really complicated. Instead of having to alter game files, this one actually just has us going back to Luke's videos. In the video label, October 16th, we see that Luke has four post-it notes under his monitor. Pig, 3K, Pig, which kind of matches that two 3K2 hints. And looking at what's actually being displayed on Luke's monitor during this moment, we see that he's on the real-life Wikipedia page for the card game Carnoffel, a German game. So how do these things connect? Well, you know how people sometimes refer to the number two as a deuce in the context of like a dice or card game? Well, that's actually a German thing, where the two card is often depicted as having a hog or sow on it. That's why Luke's post-its replace the twos with pig faces. And wouldn't you know it, but Deuce, or Daus in German, is also the name of a rare creature card in inscription, a pig with a bell. Hmm. So if the pig is a card reference, could the other ones be as well? What about the three and the K? Well, three would probably be Mantis God. It's the only card that we find in Act 1 with that triple strike ability. And K, well, this is a card game, so could it be possibly referring to a king? Say, the Rat King. 
maybe. By creating a deck with these cards and playing them all in this order during a card game against Leshy, suddenly the card names change, each to a different letter, S, T, O, P. Stop. <laughs> oh, Leshy, we've come this far. You know that telling a theorist to stop is like telling a train to stop. You can try, but it's just gonna mow you down on its way to the answers. But that's just the 2, 3K2 stuff. Still leaves us with the second half of the code, floor. Since the first part of it was found in the game, it would make sense that it's referring to something else in the game, like the various floor textures that are found throughout. So we just need to head on over to Leshy's cabin, look down, and uh, yeah, yeah, you can't do that. In the game, there is no looking up or down. Fortunately, YouTuber Flemnade figured this out and did an entire video where he opened up the game's asset files to find hidden numbers in various floor assets. By assembling all of them together, we get 27341, which is now added to our new cipher. Now on to the third and final clue, which is the second time that I've said that in this video. Maybe this time it'll be true? Anyway, archive new game. We know that there's a boss character in the game called the Archivist, so maybe he's the one who's gonna help us solve it. As soon as our encounter with him begins, we hear a bunch of beeps and boops. Yep, that is definitely one that we're more than familiar with doing on our own. That's Morse code. Transcribing it all and translating it gives us big ear. That's not the only Morse code that we can find in the game either. The next part, new game, is referring specifically to the new game card. In Act 3, it's actually sealed inside of a case, but we can still see that it's glowing, pulsating, flickering, in a pattern that resembles Morse code. Transcribing those flashes actually gives us the word, no chance. So, once again, armed with three parts of the cipher key that we got from these new clues, we go back to the command line and try to use these keys to decode log.txt. And boom! We've got ourselves text in Polish. Luckily, my family does speak a little bit of Polish, and it is useless in this context. Yeah, my, uh, my mom taught me the phrase for if the old lady isn't peeing, she's pooping when I was a kid. Yep, that is the extent of my family's knowledge of Polish, so time to hit the forums, friends! Thanks to bilingual Daniel Mullins community members, we have an English translation, giving us another part of our chat log, character B, which reveals a conversation between two co-workers at Game Funa. Character B, or Mr. Kaminsky, is not particularly happy about working on this particular assignment. You know, if the amount of F-bombs that he drops weren't a dead giveaway. Mr. Kaminsky makes this whole old data stuff feel way bigger than just a company secret, referring to things like the fate of the world and kissing the boots of the Russians, which sounds like some sort of Cold War era propaganda. On top of that, we also have Character C mentioning the name Barry Wilkinson, which, if you'll recall, is the name on the ID card that flashes up briefly when you open up the redacted files within old data at the end of the game. But who he is and what he has to do with the old data, it's still not clear. He went to prison and got back to the US eventually, but still feels like we're missing something. In fact, we're missing a third person from the chat, person A. I mean, after all, it would be kind of strange to start a conversation with person B. But of course, when I was scratching my head trying to figure this one out, I noticed another set of clues within the text, setting us up for yet another three-part search, which hopefully will give us the context that we are so desperately lacking. And it's here, at this point in the script, looking back at like seven different puzzles that we've solved already that I wonder, should I go on? Do you want me to go on? Are you guys actually interested in all this puzzle solving? Because to me, I am. I think these puzzles are a lot of fun. This isn't just your typical swap letters out for other letters code or turn up the brightness of an image thing. This stuff is hidden deep, using everything that it can to hide our answers, like game code, save files, assets, unique scenarios within the game. It is wild how involved this thing is. And I gotta admit, I've already started looking into this third batch and it's probably the most fun batch of all, digging deep into Daniel Mullins' other video games to find codes that have been hiding in wait for years. But for the sake of time, and honestly for the sake of the editors to get this video out, I need to stop it here. So, I gotta hear from you guys. Are you interested in hearing more? Do you like this level of detail? Should we keep going this in depth with each of these clues, or should I just cut to the chase and give you the answers? Let me know! I don't want to give you an episode that you're not gonna be interested in, and honestly it saves me a lot of work if I don't have to write it all out, but at the same time, I find it interesting. I hope you find it interesting, so let me know down in the comments below. And also, while you're down there, why don't you subscribe? That way you don't miss how this whole story ends when it comes out. Whatever form that episode ends up looking like. But anyway, as always, remember, don't open up your door to any mysterious game designers, and also, it's all just a theory. A GAME THEORY! Thanks for watching.